and Southwest Asia that are posed by the Soviet Union, Syria, Libya, and Iran. For this reason, we have to enhance and deepen our security cooperation with Israel, as well as with our other friends in the Middle East. We also need to recognize that as we cooperate with where our interests converge, we must never allow disagreements or points of divergence to call into question the very reasons for our alliance. So now, I could let me make just a few specific points. I'm very pleased to say that the United States is prepared to immediately undertake enhanced and expanded political and military consultations with Israel. Our objective should be to protect common interests and defend shared objectives, focusing first on threats posed by the Soviet Union and Syria. Our consultation should work toward the preparation of combined operational plans and meaningful military exercises which will enhance our readiness to cooperate in combined military operations. We are prepared to begin detailed discussions on this right away, but envisage formal meetings beginning in January. And we want to get down to work right away. Now, I have to touch on a related but sensitive matter. I know in the past that you criticized us, and sometimes we think it's been unfairly, for our military relations with the moderate Arab states. And we all remember the very bad period we went through during the AWACS debate. I've seen you. <laughs> guess, guess whose department's getting money out of it? <laughs> well, the bill that I'm signing today provides $10.5 billion in funding during the current fiscal year for essential federal, domestic, and foreign activities. Included in this amount are many program increases, which I requested including a $191 million increase in funding for the FBI, Immigration Service, and Drug Enforcement Agency to continue our efforts to step up the campaign against uh, drug smuggling and organized crime, an $82 million increase for the United States Information Agency, which will promote our efforts to carry the message of freedom to the captive nations of the earth, an additional $60 million for legal activities in the Justice Department, to ensure that the government is in position to vigorously prosecute cases and defend the financial interests of the taxpayers, and an added 80, billion or 80 million for State Department activities that will assist us in seeking diplomatic solutions to the many troubles confronting the world. However, there are a number of program increases included in the bill that we didn't request. The funding levels for a number of Commerce Department programs ranging from the Economic Development Administration to the Weather Service are nearly $470 million, more than was requested. And although I did not request funding for the Legal Services Corporation, I am encouraged that the bill at least provides sensible restrictions that will prevent many of the abuses that have plagued the program in the past. I hasten to add that the administration agreed to these LSC provisions only with the understanding that the LSC board nominees would be confirmed at an early date. The corporation has been guided by a recess appointed board for two years. It's my strong hope that the Senate will act expeditiously to confirm an 11 member board as early as possible in the second session of the 98th Congress. Despite these problems, this bill represents a good faith effort by the Congress to meet my administration halfway in fashioning spending legislation that is in the main consistent with the need to for continued spending restraint. The congressional leaders who fashioned this bill deserve considerable credit for completing this difficult task. I particularly want to express my gratitude to Senators Laxalt and Stennis and Hatfield and Representative Smith, Whitten, O'Brien, Conti, and Porter. They've done a solid job under difficult pressures and deserve considerable credit for the enactment of this legislation, which I will now sign into law.
business. United States. Here's some of the other local officials who are here in the White House this afternoon. It's good to have you in the house that belongs to all of us from every city, county, and town. Went to the same high school football games and bumped into each other at the grocery. American people, as well as you, or congressmen, or mayors, county, and local officials. If those at the grassroots are to get their jobs done and get them done right, we must. It took a lot of doing to hammer this bill together, but funding the program at this level will enable us to continue our partnership with local governments without fueling deficits. I'm sharing, and today I'm delighted to reaffirm my support. Uh, with a pen, two pens. Pens only like one word, government pens do. <laughs> Thank you.
Transformation. Martin Luther stated on one occasion that the devil flees the sound of music. Let him run today. Henry Dayton fears their strengths and struggles, and most of all, their songs. Songs which were conceived in pain, born in suffering a land of technology in which machines replace men and women on jobs, a land of powerful weapons which will enable the world to commit cosmic suicide. You need a double barrel gun in your seat. That's, that's right. Different gates in really? each barrel. Yeah. We were pretty sort of pleased that the ones gauge. that uh, the senator and his bill and, and the Girl Scouts have a clear bill that everybody wanted to get on. <laughs> All right. Well, let it. You are grateful to Matt Mattingly and Congressman <laughs> Lindsey Thomas. Thomas. The designation I want to make sure I get the name right of Juliet Gordon Lowe, Federal Building of Sedan and the Memorial. Right. Yes, Recognizing her founding of the Girl Scouts. So I shall. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> and for Senator John Warner and Paul Tribble and Congressman Stan Paris and Congressman Frank Wolf, I know about 395, Interstate 395 <laughs> and 66. And the problem that has been here in the area, so I think signing it, it is done. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Now, our employees can get to work on time. That's right. Thank you, Mr. President. We really appreciate it. And I'm sure many women will, in addition to the Girl Scouts. It's exciting to have you grow up. A lot of women in Northern Virginia, too. Yes. Sir. And men. <laughs> you can help us form a three person carpool. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. President, we have just a few more small group photos. We'd like uh, Senator Bagley and Mrs. Freeman here. Sign. And if we can have the two, Senators Trimble and Warner and Frank, if Thank you could come you, over. Okay, and if we can trade Frank for Stan now, we're going to get 395. Frank, Frank at any time. <laughs> There we go. We've Thank, got you, Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you again, sir. Happy Christmas. All right. Yeah, Merry Christmas, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. President. Thank Thank you. Thank you. My Thank favorite you. story about that's what has delayed us is a meeting on the Middle East. My favorite story that describes the Middle East, maybe you know, the scorpion and the frog. Uh, the scorpion came the frog at the edge of the stream and said, I can't swim. Would you take me across? And the frog said, Are you silly? You sting me and I'll drown. I'll die. He said, why would I do that? Then I said, oh, I can't do anything like that. That makes sense. The scorpion got out and he started across in midstream. The scorpion stung the frog as the frog was down. He said, why did you do that? The scorpion says, this is the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs>